sometimes they talk about these these people income thresholds that are quite high you know it's like well if someone's making like four hundred thousand dollars why do we need to wipe out their loan <laughs> or something you know but so it's a kind of an interesting dy dynamic on the loans with regards to the policy and again i don't i don't know the answers what you should do for you personally given the structure of the policy should you hang on to the loans even though it would be more beneficial to consolidate them because you think that the government's going to wipe out the loans in the future should you should you actually structure your thought process on on your political your political leanings based on the fact that you want to get your student loan paid off <laughs> you know i you know that's i don't know so you or your spouse have filing jointly aren't claimed as a dependent on someone else's, such as your parents 2022 return. So don't include any amount paid from a distribution of earnings made from a qualified tuition program, that's a QTP after 2018, to the extent the earnings are treated as tax-free because they were used to pay student loan interest. So use the worksheet and these instructions to figure your student loan deduction. So you can check out the worksheet if you so choose. Obviously, tax software will be helpful in practice to be determining these uh, uh, the amount of the deduction on the interest. The thing that you want to understand in your mind is basically, yeah, I should get documentation on the student loan interest. Typically, it should be per fairly easy to do the data input on. And if your income is above a certain threshold, then you might have a phase out in terms of the student loan interest that you're going to be able to deduct. It is an above the line deduction, not an itemized deduction. So if you're not phasing out, you should get a benefit from it because you don't have to clear the standard deduction in order to get it. So exception, use publication 970 instead of the worksheet in these instructions to figure your student loan interest deduction. If you file form 2555 or 4563, or you exclude income from sources uh, within Puerto Rico. Qualified student loan. A qualified student loan is any loan you took out to pay the qualified higher education expenses for any of the following individuals who were eligible students. Number one, yourself or your spouse. That one seems fairly obvious. So you took out a loan for yourself or your spouse because you're, you're, you're one entity for taxes and, uh, and now you're paying back the interest on it. So the, the interest portion might be deductible. Remember, remember not the whole payment. Not the whole payment is deductible, just the interest portion, the, char the part they charged for, for the use of the money, the purchasing power, the renting of the money. Two, any person who was your dependent when the loan was taken out. Three, any person uh, you could have claimed as a dependent for the year the loan was taken out, except that A, the person filed a joint return, B, the person had gross income that was equal uh, to or more than the exemption amount for that year or $4,400 for 2022, or uh, you or your spouse filing jointly could claim as a dependent on someone else's return. So generally the concept would be if it's someone on your return, you, your spouse, your dependent, then you would think, and it's the education expenses were re related to them, then you would think you'd get the deduction. And then you've got number three, which is this weird area where they might not be claimed as a dependent, but you've got but they're still going to qualify because of either a b or c however a loan isn't a qualified student loan if a any of the proceeds were used for other purposes or b the loan was from either a related person or a person who borrowed the proceeds under a qualified employer plan or a contract purchased under such a plan for detail c publication 970. So I think this is mostly the case for many, many people in the college town, right? They actually didn't spend the money on the education. They spent it on like beer and or whatever. But, you know, so so in that case, then, you know, I and again, obviously, if if there's an incentive that there's student loan money out there and the idea would be that you they might just wipe out the student loan money going forward, that will probably lead to people trying to scam student loan money and spend it maybe even not on st <laughs> on student loans right so so again I, I think the incentive structures we got to kind of be careful on them although i can understand uh wanting the student loans to be to be wiped out and whatnot which might in any case qualified higher education expenses qualified higher education expenses generally include tuition fees room and board and related expenses such as books and supplies so that's what you got to spend the money on 
uh, in order for the loan to be a legit loan. Now note that when we talk about these education things, we've got the HOPE credit, we've got this qualified uh, tuition that we talked about. There's there's different areas we talked about like the, the well, in any case, there's different areas where you have this, this idea of what you need to spend the money on to qualify for education type of things. And sometimes they're different if you're talking about like the student interest versus like, like a grant or something. Do I have to include that in, in income uh, versus like the hope and lifetime credits, which are credits for higher education. So you can't, you, sometimes you get those things kind of muddied up in your mind. You say, ah, you know, all, the, all those rules are the same. If it's qualified higher education expenses, room and board and, and the books and whatnot and the tuition, well, sometimes those things are, aren't all the same, right? So you got to make sure that you're applying the money, what you're spending the money on to the proper area for the student education uh, component that you're looking at, whether that be the student loan here or whether that be the HOPE lifetime credit and whatnot. So the expenses must be for education in a degree, certificate, or similar program at an eligible educational institution. An eligible educational institution includes most colleges, universities, and certain vocational schools for detail see publication 970.